News Click's Mapping Fault Lines. Today's area of focus is Syria and we are joined by Prabir Purkayasta. So Prabir, the US armed forces are withdrawing from Syria and they're leaving their allies, the Kurds, behind alone. And Turkey has also made its intentions clear that it does plan to invade the northeastern parts of Syria, which were, which are Kurdish dominated, under Kurdish, under SDF control right now. So what do you think uh, the Kurds can do now? Do you think they'll go to the Syrian government for help? Well, first, let's look at what the U.S. has done. The, you know, Trump had announced three years back he's going to withdraw from Syria. Three years, we have not seen the withdrawal take place. To a lot of observers, they have actually protected a section of the ISIS as well. But they have also, in the few uh, months, years that they have been there, they have also sometimes bombed them, sometimes kept them in enclaves protected them, we're not sure. But what has happened is they, they have helped a coalition of forces capture the area east of Euphrates and made that virtually uh, dominated by what's being called the SDF, which is really the YPG as the core constituent, the Kurdish mm -hmm. as the core constituent, with the help of the Americans. So effectively taking over roughly 25 to 30 percent of Syrian territory, which also contains its oil and gas resources. So this has been a, something which has not been uh, liked by obviously the Syrian government, who would like to take control of that area. But it is U.S. presence which has protected that area from Syrian government trying to enter and take over that area. So what happens with the American withdrawal is not only about Turkey and the northern uh, border, but also about the rest of the country. Coming back to the northern border, the Turkish forces have been poised to strike at that mm. for quite some time now. Mm. And their only reason for holding back was that the U.S. was trying to come to an agreement with the Kurdish forces as well as the Turkey. Turkey to see that the Turks do not take over that area and the Kurds have to lose their uh, control over this part of the border. You know, this is it's something which is a miscalculation on the Kurdish side. The belief that the U.S. would support them forever mm. and they would be under its umbrella against the regional forces, which is on one side Turkey, on the other side the Syrian government. So fighting against both with the protection of the U.S. Mm. was not a viable strategy. But unfortunately, the, the Kurdish reality was that in order to fight Turkey, they wanted the American support. Having taken it, they thought they were strong enough to be able to withstand all forces, including Turkey and Syria. And now that Trump has suddenly pulled the rug under their uh, feet, what do they do? Do they mm. fight Turkey? We have seen earlier the same issue had come up regarding Afrin at that point of time. It was again a uh, Kurdish enclave which was there on the northern border. At that time also Syrian government had said, you withdraw from the border, let us be posted there and we will talk to Turkey mm. so that they don't invade. So effectively we protect the border uh, from Turkey on one side and also protect Turkey from your uh, incursion if that's what they're talking about so that we will be there as protection in some sense on both sides. And it is a border of the Syrian uh, state anyway. But Kurdish forces did not like that at that time. Even now, they don't seem to be willing to enter into, a, at least before the American withdrawal, enter into negotiations. What we saw in Afrin was very clear. It was very difficult to Kurdish, for the Kurdish forces without armed uh, air, you know, artillery, aircraft, and American presence to be able to withstand the forces of Turkish armed forces. Hmm. That's what, the, again, the Afrin was a very similar condition. But the U.S. did not protect the Kurds, and the Kurds therefore lost the Afrin, Afrin enclave. So I do not see that there is likelihood of a prolonged resistance to hmm. Turkey. What the Kurdish forces will do, will they evacuate from the 30 kilometer uh, stretch, which is what the Turkish want to take control of, is an open question. Already Turkish forces are poised to strike the area. They've started bomb, uh, bombing uh, aircraft raids. There, it also, of course, poses a question also for the Russians and the uh, Syrian forces. What do they do? This is their territory. And uh, this is also their hmm. airspace, Syria's airspace. Russia has protected this airspace. So what do they do? I think this, are the, this is an open question. But I do not think the Kurds can really fight the Turkish forces for too long. They might 
strike them. They might do a hit and run tactic, but broadly this is something that they will have to withdraw. And of course it then opens the question, what the Turkey would do in this 30 kilometer stretch that they're taking over from the Kurds. How do we expect them to respond now, the Syrian government and the Russians, to Turkey's actions, to what Turkey wants to do in that region? You know, this is going to really complicate what was called the Astana process. As long as the U.S. was in Syria, the Astana process, which was really Turkey, Iran, Russia, hmm. could talk about what is to be done with respect to Syria. And they were trying to work out some modus vivendi between them or what the peace process could be. In that, Turkey was supposed to be responsible for taking out ISIS in Idlib, which they hadn't done. So there was this unhappiness with Turkey and serious force, Syrian forces with Russian support have launched attacks in Idlib. But at the same time, the U.S. being there made all three see a commonality of interest against what U.S. was doing and of course what Israel was also doing by attacking Syrian forces uh, from the air. With now the U.S. suddenly withdrawing, Turkey and Russia, as well as the Syrian government, will have to see in the new condition what should be their modus vivendi. Now, it's a possibility that uh, Russians negotiate some kind of a peace hmm. between Syria and uh, the Turkish forces. And also, the Syrian government acts to control the border. This would require the Kurds also to agree to the Syrian government yeah. representing them. And that's a big if as of now, whether the Kurdish forces will like to do that or not. Because don't forget, apart from the 30 kilometer uh, ray, the zone that we are talking about, rest, as we can see in the uh, east of uh, Euphrates, that still belongs to, uh, at the moment, is under, under the control of the Kurds, supported hmm. by the Americans. So what the Americans are going to do is also not clear. Will they withdraw from that? They have also an enclave in El Tanaf, which is to the south of uh, Syria. Yeah. And that is still an enclave which the Americans are controlling. So is this a withdrawal from only the 30 kilometer zone over there? Or is it a withdrawal from whole of Syria? Something we have to see. And I think a lot of the calculations, what the Syrian government, the Russians, and what the Turkish government would do, would depend on that as well. So it's not just the northern belt that we are talking about. Hmm. We're also talking about the rest of Syria. I think it does change the correlation of forces at the moment. And Turkey and Russia have been playing a very intricate dance, uh, as, as it were, in that they have not fought each other after, remember, Turkish, Turkey downed the, Syria, the mm. Russian aircraft. After that, they haven't had this kind of a confrontation. Whether there is chance of a new confrontation or not, will Russia be able to control Turkey? Will Turkey actually break away completely from NATO, which is there in the process of doing, or any conflict between Russia and Turkey over, for instance, this enclave would again force Turkey back to the NATO are all open questions. So I think suddenly the chessboard has been sort of uh, rearranged hmm. in a completely new way. And what moves, who will make is not clear at this stage. I expect Syrian government to become a player in this process over here in the northern zone that Turkey wants to get an entry and act in some way to regain control of the territory with Russian support. And that could be a negotiation between Turkey, Russia and Syria that may take place as long as they ensure the Turks, uh, the Kurds don't control that, that part of it. I think Turkey might be willing to also let go. But Turkey has another issue. They have something like a million, million and a half uh, Syrians who have crossed over into hmm. Turkey. And Turkey has a problem what to do with them. A lot of them have been ISIS sympathizers, supporters, families. And that's something also Turkey has to resolve. Whether they use it in Idlib to settle them, in Idlib under their protection, in this area under their protection, are all open questions. So I think, as we said, the chessboard has been reset. And we have to see what now emerges between Syria, Turkey, and uh, Russia. What is important is U.S. seems to be taking itself out of the game. So what do you think is the long-term plan of the United States here? And also what implications do we see for the larger region here? I think in the larger region, Trump's this moves also seems to show that U.S. is no longer going to be a major player in the region. Mm. And Trump has made various statements in the context of his withdrawal 
that he said, I'll, essentially, unless people pay us to do something over here, why should we be there? We don't really have an interest in this region. Now, that's strictly not true. This is an oil-rich region, the region as a whole. The U.S. has a real deep interest in this for two reasons. One is all trade in oil is denominated in dollars, mostly even today. Mm -hmm. yeah. And therefore, this is the linchpin of the dollar's economy. Mm -hmm. The global reserve currency being dollar is linked actually to the oil trade as well. So that's one interest. And secondly, oil is a strategic resource. Even if U.S. does not need oil imports, other countries do. And if they can choke that oil to other countries, then U.S. obviously has a strategic upper hand. And particularly vis-a-vis -vis China, who doesn't have any resource in terms of hydro, hydro, uh, hydrocarbon resource. True mm. for India as well. So mm. both of us really don't have hydrocarbon resources. So this acts as a strategic lever on the rest of the world. So the U.S. has two reasons why they still have a strategic interest in the region, apart from their allies, Saudi Arabia, United yeah. Arab Emirates, and so on. So I think we are not going to see U.S. Luke evacuate or leave this region. But as far as Syria is concerned, I think it's very clear that strategically it's no longer a tenable proposition for them to continue hmm. occupation of parts of Syria, hmm. which they are there illegally and yep. claiming to be against ISIS. ISIS is no longer there as the Syrian government who has really fought it. Hmm. So given that, I think we are going to see weakening of a United States strategic presence in the area. And I think, therefore, what Russia has been presenting for some time, which you have discussed vis-a-vis -vis also uh, Yemen earlier and Iraq, that there is increasingly going to be a need for the countries in this region to talk to each other and resolve their differences and not use American umbrella hmm. or American hegemonic presence in the area as as shall we say a bargaining lever with each other, I think they need to work out within themselves what should nation states do in this region. And I think this is really perhaps a start of the process as a slum uh, sum thaw in the Saudi-Iranian relationships are also appearing to show. I think so. We are looking at a larger reconfiguration of the strategic political map of the region in terms of U.S lowering its presence, though I do not think they are going to withdraw from the region. So, thank you Prabhu for joining us today. And that's all the time we have. Keep watching News Click.